Good evening, my name is Monica, and tonight I'll be responding to the claim that the actions of the modern social <coughs> justice movement are detrimental to free speech. The secondary claims were that mo the modern jo social justice movement abuses political correctness in an attempt to suppress facts that run counter to their ideology. The movement uses privilege as a label to discredit logical arguments, and the movement prevents any rational discussion on certain controversial, controversial issues. The first claim was that the modern social justice movement abuses political correctness in an attempt to suppress facts that run counter to their ideology. The opponent brings up that the book, The War Against Boys by Christina Hoff Summers is deemed politically incorrect as a backlash against girls for pointing out the misfortunes of boys. Um, but I would not necessarily say that that's considered politically incorrect. Christina Hoff Summers, she's an American author and former philosophy professor known for her writings about feminism. Um, she writes that there's an achievement gap between boys and girls in school and that girls in some areas are more are achieving more than boys. And that could just simply be a fact due to research statistics. She isn't saying that girls are doing better academically in all areas. She's just saying that girls are better in some aspects, just like boys may be better in others. The opponent also states how Larry Summers was attacked for studies showing that men had more variability in intelligence than women. Scientific evidence showed that while women do better that than men at certain verbal skills, men do better than women at some other intellectual tasks. None of this was to suggest that men are biologically better suited than women, when in fact 57% of all four-year college degrees go to women. Um, the next claim was that the movement uses privilege as a label to discredit logical arguments. The speaker brings up an article by Tal Fortin called Checking My Privilege. Um, this article, however, is just a blog and it's merely one person's experience and blogs tend to be more personal and are not as a reliable source of information. Um, it is explained that it takes characteristics of a person into account rather than the merit of their argument. And the opponent uses the example that one cannot have an opinion on things such as welfare reform if they have never been poor. Um, not everyone is equal though, but like, does this mean that um, someone cannot voice their opinion on something? Um, economically speaking, not everyone though could be equal because what would motivate someone to try harder if they're just going to be the same as everyone else? Um, the last claim was that the movement prevents any rational discussion on certain controversial issues. Um, it is stated that by sil silencing opposition, no controversy exists and then there's no argument. But when you think about it, there still has to be controversy because people are still going to speak their mind regardless of what others think. Um, to sum everything up, the social justice movement does not necessarily harm free speech because people say what they want regardless, and just because someone may get offended by something that is statistically shown does not mean that it cannot be said. Thank you. All right, Monica, you review the advocate's claims pretty clearly. You follow the structure pretty easily, so that part's good. The problem is that I think on the individual points that you're not always confronting the claim and either suggesting that the advocate is wrong in the inference that they're making or that there's some problem with the evidence that they've got. Uh, on the first point, uh, you focus on the two examples, the uh, war against boys, and in essence you say, well, there is an achievement gap, there is a difference here, and this author is a feminist author in the first place. So how does that show that... Uh, you know, the advocate's point was that these, this book has largely been attacked by people because it's perceived as being uh, against women and therefore uh, people aren't listening to that information. 
you just kind of recite what the information is and kind of summarize it. I'm not exactly sure that you've shown that it is widely recognized and widely accepted and that this is a, an overreaction. Maybe, maybe the argument that you're trying to make here is that um, the advocate was wrong, that people do listen to this uh, information, that they have been affected by it, but that didn't come through very clearly. Same thing with the Larry Summers argument. You basically just kind of repeat what the point was instead of telling us why the example doesn't work. Was it, you know, so Larry Summers, you know, the, the comment I think might be, so Larry Summers gets browbeaten online by people who disagree and think that he's uh, a sexist in some way, but did anything happen to him that was harmful? Was his argument ignored as a consequence of that? That's what the attempt was to do. Was it successful? You could argue it wasn't successful, but that's not really the point that you make. It's, it's just that uh, we're talking about that particular point. Uh, the same thing on point number two, uh, you, you challenge the block site and uh, you say well you know there's you know there's a claim that says uh, people have this opinion you know there's an explanation about the privilege argument you know you can't have a claim if you don't have some experience on this particular thing <coughs> and you say well that doesn't keep people from talking and well the advocate had some information that suggested that people use that as a uh, way of uh, keeping people from talking or to undermining the validity of their opinion from the beginning to kind of uh, prevent them a priori from being l listened to. Whether or not that evidence was strong, you might be right, it is an opinion on a blog, um, but there's no explanation about why the author is unqualified to offer that opinion and there's no counter evidence on that point. So, you know, I, I'm not sure what you get on that particular point. And on the third point, you say that people are going to continue to discuss controversies. Give me some examples. That's all. You, on this point, I think that's all you need to do is you, you need to sh you stand up and say, you know what? Despite the fact that people on the internet scream and holler and yell at each other all the time, and uh, you know they get criticized and that sort of thing, that they're not all bailing out on Twitter, and often they come back and get in the face of the per the people that are attacking them, and just show that instead of uh, people backing down, it accelerates their desire to participate in the process. I think that would be the good counterclaim on that particular point. Um, although I understand that uh, Joss Whedon bailed out on uh, Twitter because of that very kind of thing, you know, so I, uh, we got a recent example that might fit in that category for the advocate's point there.